Hi, thanks for joining our talk. And thanks to Figma for including us in Config this year. I'm Andrew Martin, he, him, Associate Creative Director at REI. And I'm joined by my coworkers, Julia and Ian. They'll introduce themselves in a minute. We work at REI, but you may ask who is REI? Well, to answer that, we need to go back to 1938. These two fine folks, Mary and Lloyd Anderson, were climbers. Mary was a pretty good climber. They called her Mary the Mountain Goat. They wanted to get good climbing gear, but they couldn't. And so they banded together with 21 friends and started REI as a cooperative to get quality ice axes from Europe. Fast forward to 1971. Another young couple, newly married, walks into an REI. They had $400 in their pocket from all the wedding gifts they just returned to Macy's. They bought, the, they bought backpacks, tents, and sleeping bags. It was their first outdoor gear, and it sparked a love of the outdoors that they then shared with their kids. One of those kids was me, seen here doing some rock climbing of my own in Acadia National Park at two and a half. Now, I feel an immense gratitude that I can play a small role at REI to help introduce the next generation to the restorative power of the outdoors, as I'm doing now with my own two sons. Now I'm gonna hand it over to Julia and Ian to introduce themselves. Hi there, I'm Julia Andich, an Associate Creative Director here on the brand team at REI Co-op. I became a co-op member in the early 2000s and joined the creative team here just a little over two years ago. Previously, I spent my career at design agencies working for companies that I thought were interesting, but I wasn't invested in. And as a professional, my focus has been branding and brand systems, identity design and packaging systems. I'm here now at REI because I believe in cooperative ideals, and I'm proud to serve the members of this outdoor co-op with every ounce of my expertise. And while my parents never shopped at an REI because we didn't have one in Ohio in the early 80s, I did grow up spending every vacation camping out of a big green Florida Conaline van with my family. And here we are on the ferry to Ocracoke, a barrier island on the, out, on the coast of North Carolina. I'm the one wearing the Adidas shorts and the dirty shoes. Hi, I'm Ian Palmgren. I'm a senior designer here at REI. My parents became members all the way back in the early 70s and loved the outdoors with their whole lives. Growing up, it felt like my family was on a mission to single-handedly define the PNW stereotypes. So we spent pretty much all of our free time in the outdoors, hiking, camping, swimming, mountain biking, skiing, you name it, we did it. But that did instill a lifelong love of the outdoors in me. And so today, working at REI, uh, I just love being able to share that passion for the outdoors and help others get outside as well. These are just our three stories as REI members, but now in 2022, what started as 23 friends united by their love of the outdoors has now grown to a community of 21 million lifetime members, each with unique stories about their connection to the outdoors. And to support them, REI has grown to 15,000 employees and over 170 retail locations across the U.S but it's still a community united by their love of the outdoors. So there's something different in our DNA as a company. We call it our quadruple bottom line. We measure our success as an organization, not by the value delivered to shareholders, because we don't have shareholders. As a member-owned cooperative, we measure our success by the value we create for our employees, members, society, and the business. So what does design look like at a company like this? We call it cooperative design. And let's see what it's made. You may know us for Opt Outside. In 2015, we were the first major retailer to close their doors on Black Friday and give all of our employees a paid day off to enjoy the outdoors. We invited people across the country to join us outside on Black Friday because we believe that time outside is fundamental to a life well lived. We've continued this invitation on Black Friday every year since. You may also know us for Zip Off Pants, What's Not to Love, pants and shorts in one. They may not pass at Fashion Week, but we sold a lot of them for a reason. But you may not know about cooperative action. It's a platform built on the idea that when we do things together, we can have a big impact in the fight for life outdoors. So to make the outdoors more inclusive for all, we set up a nonprofit called the REI Cooperative Action Fund to support organizations on the ground making change. And now every new membership sold at REI helps support this effort. We also launched new lines of business like resupply, where members can buy and sell used gear. We've, we've also provide classes, rentals, and experiences to make it easier than ever for anyone to get affordable gear and enjoy time outside. Also, building on our efforts 
to fight for racial equity in the outdoors, last year we announced our commitment to becoming a fully inclusive, anti-racist, multicultural organization. As part of this, we launched the Path Ahead Ventures, offering support to Black, Indigenous, Latinx, and AAPI-owned and led startups. What's so essential about this is that founders of color represent only 1% of the outdoor entrepreneurs. So our goal is to create an outdoor industry where opportunity and success reflect the true diversity of people who love, protect, and share life outside. So that catches you up on REI. Today, we're gonna to share some learnings from the last few years of working at a different kind of company. And they fall into three buckets. Be cooperative by design, make do to make it happen, and keep close to keep it going. Wait, I thought this was a design systems talk. Well, let's talk design systems. I had the pleasure of leading a team of designers who formed our design system, Cedar, over five years ago. Pioneers like Jay Smith led a grassroots effort at REI to create our design system from scratch. We set our strategy with the help of visionaries like Nathan Curtis, and the team created over 30 components, encompassing every possible component variant, just a few input variations on my right here, and they wrote over 70 pages of documentation and gained adoption across all of our core digital products, driving massive gains in team efficiency and improved brand cohesion. So we had a mature design system, but now what? We woke up and we realized that we were only able to affect a slice of the end-to-end -end customer experience, but brand impressions are made from every interaction. We needed to think bigger and engage the whole REI creative community. But how do you keep over 100 remote designers across multiple divisions aligned to brand standards across disciplines as diverse as digital product design, marketing, physical store design, and private label product design? Not to mention 360 ad campaigns across dozens of channels. For us, the solution was a digital brand hub, but we needed to create the actual brand standards first. And to do this, we had to face some hard realities. And now I'll hand it over to Julia to tell more of the story. When I started at the co-op, our creative teams were heavily siloed, each building their own standards and design strategies. And it showed our brand was disjointed across channels and across offerings. We had weak brand equity at this point in time, low recall and low recognition in places that weren't familiar with REI co-op. We knew we needed to fix this. So we embarked on a years long cross-divisional journey to update our core brand standards. But first we needed to build our shared understanding of the work ahead. And on the eve of COVID, we ran in-person workshops as a team to dive deep into our history, our brand personality, and our creative principles. And more than just that, the time we spent together built bonds between us that between built bonds between us creatives that didn't exist before. We knew that this traditional top-down authoritative approach to brand and brand standards wasn't what we were set up for. And we knew there was a way of working that also reflected our cooperative ideals. And so we dug into the work starting at the very foundation. And we needed to answer a few questions for ourselves, like what does it mean to be a co-op? How is a co-op different from other kinds of companies? And what does it mean to belong? What is belonging? What kind of guidance do we need in place to make sure our employees, members, and future members connect with these ideals? We had existing brand assets and equities, but a brand is so much more than a collection of assets. Without intent, color, typography, photography, and illustration are just surface design. What were these existing assets really doing for us? And did creatives know what to do with them? Well, clearly no, given the disjointed state of our creative expression. And the bigger question we had was, what does it mean to design for a co-op? And how is it different from any other outdoor retailer? And what do we want people to feel? And what's the purpose and each of each element of our brand? We had a logo that had been around for a while and we know it's funky, but we love it. We had a custom typeface designed with Christian, designed with Christian Schwartz from Commercial Type. That's a hard one, tongue twister. This is REI Stewart. It was inspired by National Park Service signage and designed with legibility as a key requirement to make our messages more inclusive and accessible for everyone. We also have a years long massive investment in our photo library and asset capture practices. And most creative at the co-op also had a smattering of illustration. Although we are a very photo-driven brand at that point, uh, there was one highly distinctive illustration style developed in-house by Todd Durkee for product. 
and it wasn't really being utilized elsewhere. The wonderful thing about it was that it wasn't perfectly the same. And what we came to understand was that for illustration to really work for us, it had to be able to see all the wobble and imperfection of the human hand that created it. And the human part made it co-opy. We had to build an understanding of co opiness we needed a design strategy that helped us build brand recognition, which was one of our primary problems, but also kept us go op -y. And Basically, the equation set the rules in place. We had to have green, we had to have Stuart, we had to have that logo for the brand recognition piece, and then we needed a wild human element. We also knew that for our brand to have the most impact, we needed to put our customer at the center, and that meant putting a more rigorous brand architecture in place so we could apply design thoughtfully. We considered the role of each offering and how hierarchically it should be expressed through the lens of brand. And one of the outputs at the end of all this deep thinking was a North Star visual that compiled creative expression that touched many different parts of the co-op under one vision. It built our momentum as we refined the guidelines and started to align creative and market. By immersing ourselves in our own story, refining our point of view and iterating together, we built a greater understanding than any of us could have brought on brought along alone. And in doing that, we forged deep bonds across the organization. In short, we learned to be cooperative by design. And now I'm gonna hand it over to my colleague, Ian, to talk about those brand standards a bit. So at this point in time, the question becomes, how do we bring those brand standards to life? We've done all this really awesome work, but now we needed to get it into the hands of digital designers, physical product designers, retail store designers in over 170 locations, and a marketing team that was working on year-round campaigns. So in short, we needed a single source of truth for a brand. And most importantly, we needed to ensure that the brand standards were always just a click away and always up to date for every designer, regardless of the medium that they were working in. The initial output of all that work was a 300 plus page PDF, but we all know the problems with PDFs. PDFs gather dust. There's no easy way to navigate or find content within a PDF, and there's no way to ensure that everyone is referencing the most up-to-date version of the content. So this is an actual screenshot on the right that Andy took from his uh, computer, which I'm sure many of you can relate to. Now, to be fair, the long-term goal of this was never to have a brand hub stuck within a PDF. The plan was always to build a team of engineers and designers to create a website that we could use. So we had a team, we had a vision, and then COVID hit. And as a company, we had the pivot to focus entirely on how to keep our employees safe and how to make sure we could keep the business alive when the world was basically shutting down. But with disaster comes opportunity as well. In 1962, REA faced a slightly different type of crisis that threatened to put the company out of business. Seattle was hosting the World's Fair and in an attempt to visit, or excuse me, in an attempt to thrill new visitors to the area, the water department tried to turn up the water pressure in all the fountains downtown at once. And unfortunately, this caused a water main located right next to the REI warehouse to burst, which flooded it in over seven feet of water and mud. And the inventory, which today would have been valued at over 1.1 million, appeared to be at a complete loss. But for a week, employees scraped mud off shoes, hung sleeping bags to dry, and cleaned everything up as best they could. And in the end, they just threw a huge water damage sale and sold everything at a steep discount. And this marked the first in a new tradition that would later on become one of REI's most beloved annual events, the REI garage sale. What does a flooded warehouse in 1962 have to do with brand guidelines? Well, nothing water related, luckily. <laughs> but what we can do is channel that same spirit of resourcefulness, of scrappy crisis into opportunity mentality. When it was clear that there was no immediate future in which we'd have brand hub as we'd originally envisioned, we had to improvise. So instead, we built it in Figma, just as a prototype, built by designers, for designers, no code needed. Once we actually made the decision to build it in Figma and to commit to that, it came together pretty quickly. To ensure that everything felt cohesive and could be easily consumed, we started by using components and variants to just create basic predefined building blocks and layouts that would define how copy was expressed, how imagery would show up, and what they would look like when paired together. The idea being that as we took this monstrous PDF and converted it into a Figma prototype, 
we could just drag and drop these blocks into an auto layout container and populate it with content from the PDF. So after our foundation was set up, we then moved into thinking about things like hierarchy, navigation, and how we could use you know, these basic interaction patterns like hover to create engagement or reveal different types of content. And then stepped it up one more notch by asking ourselves, you know, how do we create these interactive moments and rich ways for people to engage with the content just like they would on a real website? So thinking about things like dragging or scrolling through image containers, interactive sliders that you can use your mouse on, carousels, tab systems to split up like content, and these elements that can be dragged around just to create these really nice, small, interactive moments. And then finally, how to make it fun, how to add some life and energy to this, how to really push interactive components to the limit to bring out a bit of magic and excitement to the brand hub. And even just doing small things like animating the illustrations, making the mountains wink at you every 10 seconds, or having the clouds just move around a little bit to some more advanced things like, like time-based color shifts or phase animations and lots more. So bring all of those pieces together and you've got the REI Brand Hub built entirely in Figma, a fully interactive, cookable space. Anyone can come, learn about the history, learn about our story, or dig into our visual strategy, learn about the elements that we use to define our creative look and feel. If, you wanna, if they wanted to investigate more about typography, they could jump to that page and learn about the history of the font and how that story came to life or jump into one of my personal favorites, the photography page, and sort of learn about REI's point of view on how we capture the moment of people in nature and then how we can use those visuals to bring our stories to life. So the takeaway here, make do, make it happen. And it's worth noting that making do doesn't have to mean making compromises. And in fact, there's really a lot of advantages to what we did. Because this is built in Figma and was not hand-coded, we have a brand hub that was created in weeks, not months. Updates are literally instantaneous or can be managed with branching. Adding contents takes minutes, not days, and is unified through these predefined building blocks. And changes can be done by a single person at any time from anywhere. We don't need a designer, an engineer, a QA person just to fix a typo or change a hex value. If we had waited until we got the budget and leadership approval to spin up a team of engineers to code this, we'd probably still be waiting to this day two plus years later. So sometimes the best solutions are the ones that are sitting right in front of you. With that, I'll give it back to Andy to take us through the next piece in the story. So you solved the brand, now what? Well, not quite. A little help from Brendan Fraser on sarcastic punchline there. But really, there were still more challenges ahead. So we had to keep the forum to keep the momentum. We realized that we developed a cross-disciplinary approach to creating and sharing our brand standards with Figma, and it had already started to change the way we were showing up it, as a more connected and cohesive brand to customers as an omnichannel retailer. But we knew there was more opportunity. So we kept the forum of the Brand360 team and used it to share work and evaluate it against our new standards. Not only that, but since the brand hub launched, we even reorganized teams into a new center of excellence for brand creative and design to further accelerate this creative cohesion across disciplines and pioneer new ways of working for better creative outputs. Just as our standards work had drawn to a close, we faced one of the biggest challenges yet, and our standards were truly put to the test. Our company was undertaking the largest update to our membership program since its inception that truly reached every creative team and every corner of our business. Could we bring a cohesive expression of our brand to the largest stage? Fortunately, by this time, Figma had been adopted by more teams beyond digital, from marketing to store to private label brand teams. And we were able to share assets and work in a more open and collaborative way, true to our mission as a cooperative. Building the membership end-to-end -end flows for this 360 campaign at the largest scale became easier. And thanks to our brand standards work, teams were more aligned than ever on our assets and expressions. Sharing the true customer experience across channels to the executive team became an open and collaborative process with work populated in a matter of days. We even created clickable prototypes to show the end-to-end -end experience through a customer lens. 
as Andy mentioned, we utilized Figma to share and align concepts across teams and channels, and then peeled the work out to the more traditional work streams. We've tackled everything from social media creative to massive print catalogs and billboards, getting conceptual alignment, alignment around intent and message before working in a more traditional production process has helped us move a lot more quickly. And we haven't stopped moving. Branding and communication is a dialogue with customers and it can never be complete. And so we're working on more meaning, meaningful ways to collect and share co-op member stories, ways to activate our membership to protect and share life outside and be relevant in local markets. So it's important to remember that your brand is always evolving, kind of like a tent on the run. But really, um, to create the best experience for customers, not just in digital, but across every touch point, we had to dig deep to our roots as a cooperative founded by 23 friends. We had to embody the essence of our brand and forge deeper connections for a common purpose. We had to break down silos between creative teams with heroic empathy, listening with curiosity to the needs and constraints of each discipline in order to create brand standards that served each discipline and created a truly seamless customer experience. In short, we had to keep close to keep it going. Reflecting back, you know, working differently can be hard at first, but the benefit is clear. So I challenge you to do it for the customer and do it for your team. You'll be happy you did. In summary, to get started on a new path, you have to be cooperative by design. And when crisis strikes, sometimes you need to make do to make it happen. But when you're back on track, you need to keep close to keep it going. Thank you. And a special thanks to my fellow creative leaders on the Brand360 team and many more fine folks at REI who created and contributed to what you've seen today. And now we have one more thing. I'll leave it, you with a final wave goodbye from REI. The more we get out there, the more we discover that there's a community with room for everyone and a membership that never expires, that goes wherever we go, that loves what we love. Hey. Always welcoming us outside. REI, better is out there.